Hey guys, welcome to the vlog. Dan here. I hope you're well and keeping safe. Okay, episode three, where we're finally going to record some guitars. One of my main reasons for this vlog was I wanted to see what I could achieve in this tiny little box room that I've turned into this little studio. Now, you know, Mick and I are in quite a privileged position where we get to sit in our studio and turn the amps up and get everything sounding great and use really great microphones, but it's not really appropriate for where I am. And I'm sure that's the same for a lot of you. Uh, you wouldn't really be able to turn up amplifiers in your home and, you know, put the mics on the cabinets. So what I wanted to explore uh, is the world of IRs, which is impulse responses. Okay, so to get things started, I bought a couple of amps home with me. I bought my Matchless, and I also bought home the Audio Kitchen Big Chopper. Now, these will be plugged into the Two Notes Torpedo Reload, which is uh, it's a load box, and that will enable me to plug my amplifiers in and turn them up, get them working, but then I can come straight out of the um, torpedo straight into the interface without the need for a speaker being attached to the amplifier. So with the amplifier signal connected to the interface via the load box, we now use the IR to replicate the effect of having a microphone on the cabinet. Now, as you can imagine, there are endless different sorts of IRs, different cabinets, different microphones, different mic positions, and we'll be using the two notes wall of sound to load those IRs and uh, see the results we get. But this is all new to me, so I wanted to see what results I could get with basically zero experience. So I reached out to my good friend Rabia for some tips. Hello. Hey, thank you so much for doing this, mate. It's so so cool of you. How are you going with isolation? Uh, it's interesting, to say the least. Um, constantly trying to keep busy, but other than that, it's yeah, it's good. How are you? I I think I am the same as thousands of men up and down the country, desperately missing my barber. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you uh, use IRs a lot when you're doing demos and that, right? Yeah, I'm just been, generally because I live in a terraced house and neighbours would definitely kill me if I was cranking cabs. So IRs, uh, I got introduced to load boxes a couple of years ago, maybe three or four years ago now. And the way you can load your own IRs in and uh, yeah, it's kind of a game changer for home recording really. So what are some of your golden rules when it comes to working with, with IRs in a, in a home studio situation? Um, well, firstly, you want to make sure that they're in phase. So if you're using, okay. uh, if you're using, uh, to be honest, you're using the t two note stuff. Um, that's that does a lot of that for you. It has uh, okay. fa phase cal calibration for you. Um, so that's number one. Number two, I suppose it's like if you're recording with IRs, just make sure you've got a full spectrum of the of the guitar sound. So you want all the low end information and you want the high end information, and whether that's for a clean, for a crunch, for an overdrive, when you're hearing it through your monitors, and if you're not sure, look at a spectrum, look at a EQ, or put headphones in just to double check. And what you just want to be able to feel is the thump that a speaker makes. Right. Um, and at the same time, you want to be able to just get a bit of that sizzle that's just in the top of any kind of, uh, you know, gain guitar tone. Um, you know, I think it's definitely easier to find a good IR for any gain guitar sound than it is for a clean yeah. guitar sound? I think because a lot of the stuff that I'm doing is sort of mid mid gain stuff where you're still hearing yeah. a lot of the guitar. So that's sort of challenging. Ultimately, when you're in a studio environment, home or professional studio environment, it's a, it's a way more isolating uh, sort of experience with the guitar sound because you're hearing it through mics. It's not the same as a cab in a room. So sure. you have to be comfortable in that environment I think and you know if you've played and recorded in many studios then it's you've kind of got to go into that headspace with it a bit you know but yeah when, I, when I'm at home and I work at home and I'm, uh, most of the time when I'm at home uh, that's what I'm doing here so I have to get the eye I have to get be able to get the feel of the guitar right at home yeah yeah um and so having had, had experience now with quite a few different load boxes and all that kind of stuff and IRs and that kind of thing it's yeah I, I think blending IRs is the best way to do it. I think one isn't quite a true representation of what a speaker sounds like in a room. Yes. So for example, right now I'm running my Kraken into the Ox, um, where I've got a Ribbon 57 combo and I'm EQing it and compressing it in post, well, in the Ox, yeah. um, to kind of give me a more natural feel. So if someone's looking to get some good IRs to get started, where should they go? 
if they're if they're looking to get good IRs, well, obviously, if you buy any of the two note stuff, the IRs that it comes with are really good. Uh, right. Particularly now they're releasing tons more packs, all the Zilla stuff and the Mesa stuff is really good. Um, uh, but for me, the obviously Nolly has been responsible for most of the IRs I've used for the last couple of years wow. um, because he does such a fantastic job and he's got such a collection. So in terms of a product that he's affiliated with, I'd say the GGD cab pack that he's just created, a lot of which will be the same ones that I've been using. Um, so I would recommend that because it's a fantastic plugin. How far away are you from having your own pack? Oh, I would love that. Yeah, I, I've to be fair, been chatting about doing something like that, going down to see Nolly and making some bespoke IRs that I know is that the sound I would like. Sure. Um, so I don't know. In, in the coming months, maybe it depends if we're allowed out of our houses. Dude, thank you so much. No worries. Thank you for yeah, really for the chat. This. Appreciate so, it. Stay safe. Right. You too. I've also built a pedal board specifically for this recording. Right, we're getting there. This is the board that I put together specifically to record. Now it's got all the gain stages that I wanted to use and a couple of other things that I know I'm gonna use quite a bit. The camouflage, got a couple of faces down here. On the right hand side of the board, I've got uh, a Cinco patch bay. And what that's going to enable me to do is I've got two guest loops here. You know, things that I need for, for a track with different reverbs or delays or fuzzes and things I can patch in and basically any point in the chain. For example, guitar is going into the board, uh, but everything's bypassed and I'm now plugged directly into the big trees, into the little orange cabinet. Okay, now let's say I want to add the purple plexi to that, which is in loop three. Right, I want to add some phaser. So the moon phaser, which is in loop eight, gives us this sound. Now, but if I want to add a bit of delay to that, I've got the tonal recall and that's patched into the insert loop, which is now attached to loop nine. So if I turn that on, signal is routed to the patch bay into the tonal recall and that gives us the delay. Also, I have a guest loop that sits at the very front uh, in loop one and that means I can try out all my old fuzzes and, and get some sounds that way but because I can move the order of the loops around it also means that I can plug in different preamps and move those after the gain stages so for example I've got this Squire preamp uh, and it sits in loop one but I've moved that after the analog man uh, sun face and then that's hitting the camouflage and then that's coming back out into loop nine into the tonal recall and that sounds like this. So with the board set up like this, it means that I can dial my sounds in really quickly, uh, but then I can just try things on the fly with the guest loops. So it's been two days since I talked to Rabia and went through the do's and don'ts of using IRs, and I am slowly going out of my mind. Uh, I can honestly say this is one of the toughest things I've, I've had to do, because what I'm doing is I've got to shift my thinking between being musical and trying to put a great performance in to being some sort of engineer producer and I'm finding that really hard. The software's amazing, uh, the interface, all that stuff is amazing. The weak link in the chain is me um, because this is the first time I've done this so I don't know if what I'm trying to achieve is unrealistic. So what I've been trying to do over the last couple of days is just to get one sound together 
and this is the the rhythm sound like the, the riff sound this is the first of eight different guitar parts on this one song and I've got four songs to do so let me see if I can show you what I've done um, this is the sound <laughs> So the main sound is this um, IR of a 1x12, uh, let's see, it's a 1x12 G12 H cream back with a C414 up close, okay? And that IR alone sounds like this. Then I've got the same cab, same mic, but far away, and that sounds like this. The third IR I've got is the same cab but an SM57 off axis. Now if you hear that by itself it sounds like this. Okay so that's the guitar sound I've dialed up for now for the first part of the song so um, let's start tracking and see how we go. Okay, I've finally got my first rhythm track down and it sounds fine. Does it sound like my cab? No, but it's a good sound and it's certainly a usable sound. Uh, so we'll see what happens when we come to mix that. Um, but for now, I need to lay down some bass. Okay, so that's the guitars done for the main riff, which is basically this Telecaster into a Kingsley Page going into the Matchless. Now I've doubled that up, and it was really interesting what uh, Rabi was saying, that you can hear when you double that up, even though the sound hasn't got a lot of gain in it, you it really adds to the gain when you add those sounds together. Now I wanted to do some harmonized guitar in the chorus to help support the vocal harmonies. Uh, so basically I've got, it's a three part harmony, uh, three different gain structures, one with a phase, one with a flange, and one with a mixture of chorus and phase. <laughs> A few months ago, Mick and I did a show on reverb and looking at some really cool ways to use it. And one of those ways was having it right at the start of your signal chain, so reverb into gain. And it gave me an idea for the breakdown section of this song. So you'll hear this, I've got uh, two sounds panned hard left and right. Both have reverb right at the front. One is going into fuzz and one's going into overdrive. Okay, the guitar parts for this song are finally done. Uh, I'm yet to do vocals, but you'll hear those when we get to the mixing production side. Uh, but for now, here's a quick snippet on how everything sounds. So there you go guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, I'm having so much fun doing this. Obviously, it's a massive learning curve for me, uh, but I'm feeling a lot more comfortable with this technology and I'm pretty confident that when I get all the parts down, we'll have something there that we'll be able to mix into you know, a decent sounding song and hopefully a decent sounding EP. And that will be the next episode. I'm gonna sit down with Fraser, possibly remotely, and we're going to look at some key points about getting a really great mix. Okay, guys, thank you so much for watching. Um, subscribe, all that stuff. 
Uh, keep safe and hope to see you soon. Bye. Bye.